Good morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the House of the Lord on this July 26th. I'm so glad that you're with us. Um, we are worshiping at the First Church in Heartland, and um, we are waiting for a few others to join us. Um, and we are already live on Facebook, so um, after our little technical glitch last week, we will have the ability for people to join us on Facebook Live. And as I have often said, we um, also provide the service in an edited fashion. Um, we have our own YouTube. Um, I'm going to ask everyone to mute yourself. Um, I muted someone, but please mute yourself. That would be so wonderful. Appreciate that. And. Um, Let's try that again, make sure we don't get any feedback. So let me just uh, check one thing. Just to make sure. There, I think we're, oh, that's better. All right, thank you. All right, now you're gonna play something. Okay, thank you, hold on one second. Yes. So as we enter into worship now, would you please enjoy this wonderful prelude? We have the um, real pleasure and honor of having Nancy Huber back on the Oregon today. And uh, she and Keith are going to um, lead us in music worship today. So thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. I do want to welcome you and I have a few announcements uh, which we will quickly go through. First of all, we are collecting backpacks and we will be doing the backpack ministry again this year, which has been such an appreciative, appreciated effort on the part of the First Church in Heartland. We have a special need this year for sanitizer, wipes, tissues, masks, pens, binders, highlighters and markers and we will be collecting through August 2nd so please bring your items to the parish hall and uh, we also are accepting dollar donations and so if you um, would like us to buy some of the items to fill in uh, some of the kids really need especially the older children really need flash drives um, because they're going to be still doing some online um, online uh, schooling 
We have postponed the Bible study. Uh, it's just sort of a, too much broken up in the summer with a lot of vacations that are scheduled. And so uh, we will resume Bible study probably um, after, uh, at least into September. And I apologize for the slip up last week. We were not able to uh, record on Facebook Live. And so there is no recording of last week's service. God must have had something in mind and uh, sort of like you had to be here, I guess, to hear it. So I'm sorry about that. Um, and uh, let's see, there is one other um, announcement. I do want to go through a little bit of the COVID-19 uh, situation right now because Connecticut has just changed. They have added a number of states to, those, uh, to the list of those states from which people coming must quarantine when they come to Connecticut. It is now 31 states. And so um, we do apologize if you're coming from any of those 30, to, I think it's 31 or 32 today, um, you must quarantine for 14 days. So I say that in advance of the next announcement, which is that um, I am going to be installed in this church uh, on September 13th. And so I give you that notice because if you are planning to come to the installation in, per in person, uh, you need to have a, a already complied with the Connecticut guidelines for COVID precaution. So the installation will be um, here at the First Church in Heartland um, in person. We have a limited number of seats, so you have to reserve early. And I was asked by the leadership of the church to make sure that our church family knows that first so that you get your reservations in. And then we will allow as many people as we can, according to the guidelines, into the church. We will also be um, hosting that on Zoom, and it will be recorded um, on Facebook Live as well. So details to follow, but it will be 1130 on September 13th, which is also a day when we may celebrate New Member Sunday and our Rally Sunday. Welcome back to all those who have had a wonderful, um, a wonderful summer. So thank you. As we enter into worship, uh, we have selected a, a, a hymn called Gathered in His Name, and I think you have the, um, the lyrics in your order of worship and they appear on your screen so that you can join in. Uh, those of you in the service, um, we are asking that you lip sync only and we thank you so much for joining us in worship today. Let us set our hearts and minds on, on God today and watch what God does. Thank you. <laughs> Will you join me in the call to worship that appears on the screen and in your order of worship? Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. Yes, Lord, you are worthy of praise and honor and worship. We seek your will and your ways as we worship in spirit and in truth, in Jesus' name. A great portion of our worship service is dedicated to prayer, and when we get to the sermon, I think you will see one of the reasons why we spend so much time in prayer, why we gather together, bear one another's burdens, and celebrate one another's joys. 
As we enter into that prayer time, let us join together in an excerpt from um, a song that's called From Sweeter Than Wine. And uh, please join me in the prayer of awareness. Before the earth's creation, you knew me as I was. And even then, you chose me to be yours. I am captivated by your unending love. Lord, my heart is surrendered to your grace. I can't help but lift up my voice and say your love is better than life, sweeter than wine. It is more than I can ever imagine. Your love is all that I need. So Lord, I receive your loving kindness and grace for me. Amen. And now as we join as the people of God, let us join in these prayers. First, I wanna offer a tremendous joy for Lisa Sheehan's daughter and to-be son-in-law, Melissa and Tori's wedding is August 1st. We already prayed for the God to be in the midst of that wedding. And I would ask that you continue those prayers through August 1st, lift this couple before God, and we pray that God would bind them together in the threefold cord, Melissa, Tori, and Jesus together for their entire married life. May they bless many others in this union. We also want to pray for many, the many that I'm hearing of. Um, July 30th is World Day Against Trafficking. So please pray for those children and adults who are significantly at risk. I don't think we can fathom the number of people, men, women, young girls, children, believe it or not, as young as six months old that are stolen or sold into sexual slavery. Please pray for those at-risk children and go to World Day Against Trafficking. We pray for Chris T. in a Florida hospital who is uh, struggling with a diagnosis and a journey uh, back to healing. We pray for Pastor Carlos and his family in Rhode Island who have contracted COVID and we ask for healing for them. We pray for marriages and for family relationships. We pray for those that have experienced a breach. We pray for those who may be estranged. We pray for those that are far from each other. We pray especially for children in foster care and for those who are seeking adoption, especially older children uh, that are not as desirable for adopting. We pray, oh God, that you would be their father and their mother, and that you would lead these children to the right home. We pray, oh Lord, that you would never leave them or forsake them. We pray also for Frank and for Ed Ransom, for Jerry Lynn, for Tom H., Joey M., Kelsey, and for all those who need healing. Oh God, you know that we face. So cold or is it really hot? Oh, okay. Um, okay. I would ask that everyone please mute your phones. Thank you. Um, we continue our prayer, O oh Lord, with those who really need healing this day and every day. We pray for Danny Oleksak struggling with severe health issues. We pray for those who are grieving the heartbreaking loss of a loved one who has died. Especially we pray today for Cheryl's family. They, they are fresh in the loss of this wonderful woman. We pray for Wit, a young man in need of deliverance and God's mighty rescue. We pray for his family that they would have patience and understanding that they would have the courage to give tough love and to allow wit to find a way back to God. We know that God hears the prayers of our hearts and we ask now for your mercy and grace to flow. Let us pray together and then we will join in the prayer that Jesus gave us. 
Holy God, we put on the mantle of prayer today and we lift those whose names we have mentioned and we lift the ones on our hearts, the names that we have not mentioned, but we know so well, the families who are struggling financially, economically, in work, the families who are struggling that suffer under COVID-19. We pray for those essential workers, frontline workers, healthcare, every other type of worker who goes to work every day and exposes him or herself to the virus in order to maintain their family's income and to serve others. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we have the ability to work. We ask that you would give us the courage, the strength, and the safety to do so. We thank you for the many blessings that you have provided, dear God. We don't forget all of your benefits. They are listed in Psalm 103. We forget not all your benefits, Lord. We pray for the joys and the concerns that our people lift before you. We take these few moments of silence to lift those names and concerns into your presence, and then we will pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time in our service, we normally take our offering, and I know that you have brought many things into worship today. You have brought your praise and honor. You have brought your finances. You have brought your concerns. These are all offerings before God. And uh, I, I'm still so struck by the words that Mother Teresa often asked others when she would bring out her long list of needs that needed to be financed, she would say to the person she was talking with, do you want to do something beautiful for God? So we are doing some things beautiful. We are doing backpacks and we have done some food, grab and go food meals for people. And so I know that we are a giving people and I encourage you to continue to give in this, in this time. Don't stop giving. God will continue to bless us and make up for all that we give of our own. We thank you. And now let us join in putting God first as uh, Nancy and Keith sing, Seek ye first.
Thank you. Will you join with me in saying the prayer of dedication that appears on the screen and in your order of worship as we bring our offerings to God? Dear God, we have much to be thankful for in our world today. We will not be shaken by the events and happenings around us. As we focus on you, we will remember that you have given us all things that we need and that you ask nothing of us but to love you with all of our strength, all of our mind, and all of our heart. We give to you today in that spirit. Please accept our offering and make it holy. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today is taken again from the book of Romans, chapter 8. We have spent these last two weeks, and this is our third week in Romans, chapter 8. It is a landmark chapter in the Christian faith, and so please read along with me. Romans 8, verses 26 to 39. I'm reading a New Living Translation. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to God's purpose for them. For God knew God's people in advance, and God chose them to become like the Son, so that the Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, God called them to come to him. And having called them, God gave them right standing with the God self. And having given them right standing, God gave them his glory. What shall we say about these wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since God did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't God also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from God's love? Does it mean God no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Will you pray with me? 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of your glory. Angel of the Lord, take the coal, touch my mouth and cleanse my lips, for my eyes have seen the King. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. So yes, friends, we are still in the book of Romans, and this is such an important letter to us as Christians, particularly in this time of struggle and uncertainty and wondering and waiting. We are wondering, when will this all end? When will we resume living? What will be next? We're waiting. We're waiting for the next shoe to drop. And you may be wondering why this is Sangria Sunday. So I'm going to tell you. Sangria, you know, is, has become known as kind of a frou-frou drink that people serve at frilly parties. But it wasn't always so. It's a life-giving refreshment. Back in the days of Jesus, a, a type of sangria was served because it was the only way that people could drink water safely because it is a diluted wine. And it did provide life-giving refreshment in those days. And that is what I think we need right now, life-giving refreshment. And the promises of this passage of scripture are life for us and in us. As I read that scripture, I actually got goosebumps thinking nothing shall ever separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. The love of God is so powerful. In this brief number of verses, there are so many promises. We are promised that the Holy Spirit prays for us, and not just for our well-being, but the Holy Spirit is praying our own prayers and the promise here is, especially when we don't know how to pray or what to pray for, we have this confidence that the Holy Spirit is praying what we want to pray, but in concert, in alignment with what God's will is. Imagine if we didn't have the filter of the Holy Spirit in praying. It would be chaos in all of creation people asking all kinds of conflicting prayers. So you can see right away the tremendous value of the Holy Spirit in our prayer life. We are further promised right standing with God. We're promised that if God is for us, no one can be against us. The abolitionist Wendell Phillips said just on the eve of the Civil War, he said, one on God's side is a majority. We are promised that all things will work together for our good. Whatever Satan has meant for evil, God will turn to good. Now, that doesn't mean that nothing bad ever happens to us, but it does mean that we can press on. We keep hope alive and the actual translation of that phrase, all things work together for good, is quoted often in Christian circles. But it really means God works together all things for good. God works together all things for good. So those three persons of the Trinity, is God working together all things? We are also promised that nothing shall ever be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing we do, nothing anyone else does in all of creation can ever separate us. The powers of hell, this, script, this scripture says, the powers of hell, though they have power, they are powerless against us because God is our God. Those are promises, and I find them refreshing. So that is one reason why this is Sangria Sunday. 
I also like this sangria image because pretty much no one ever makes sangria to drink alone. Sangria is a sign of gathering. It's a refreshment that is shared. It's social. And in, it implies that sense of gathering and sharing. And I think God knows we need that sense of gathering today more than ever. The other reason I chose sangria for today is one of our refreshing drinks. You know, we started with lemonade, we went to iced tea, and um, I will, for some that have asked, the, the um, liquid in my cup is not sangria this morning. It's a little too early for me for sangria. Uh, not my favorite drink anyway, but we, I, I like it because there are several ingredients in, in sangria. It's a tasty, refreshing, drink that has some identifiable ingredients, but when you taste it, when all those ingredients are mixed together, you can't tell everything that's in there. I wonder if the people who are going to enjoy this later today, it's going to a family in this church actually, I wonder if they'll be able to identify all the things that are in this sangria. It tastes so good. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a purist. I like my flavors a little more separated, but I think the analogy of, of God in three persons is very true. It really, can I say, holds water, so to speak. So I'm wondering if those who drink this later will be able to discern what is in there. <clears throat> and that is very much like God. We get the taste of God we sense God operating in our lives, but I would ask you, do you know if it's the work of God, our loving parent, our father? Is it the work of Jesus Christ, our redeemer? Is it the work of the Holy Spirit? Frankly, it's hard to tell. I like this mixture image because what Paul has been talking about in the first eight chapters of Romans is the unique characteristics and roles and operations of God, of Jesus, and of the Holy Spirit. These three entities have unique characters, unique operations in our lives, and yet the mixture and the way that they function together on our behalf is positively beyond our fathoming. We cannot fit it into our little brains. If we try to, then God is not big in our lives. If God can fit into my puny brain, then I'm not letting God be God. To me, it seems like Paul is trying to paint a picture of a conversation going on here. The conversation involves these three. It involves God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I think these three are very much present in this conversation. And God starts and says, yes, I made them all in my image. They have everything they need to live and thrive and do great work in the world and even enjoy heaven. Yes, they can know peace in time of tragedy and troubles, but some of them step out of my frame step out of my protection. And the Holy Spirit comes in and says, yeah, 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 they wanna do it their own way because they don't know all of what you have promised. They get stuck in places in their lives. The very people we prayed for in some cases are stuck in places in their lives. The Holy Spirit goes on to say, it happens to all of them some in little ways and some in big ways, but that's why I pray, that's why I groan and nudge them. I sometimes corral them into remembering that they're made in your image, Father, that you want the best for them always, that they should step back into your frame of protection. And then Jesus pipes up and says, hey, wait a minute. Don't forget the work that I did. I paid the price for each of them, for all of them, to reconcile them with you, 
Father God. Nothing should stand in their way to live victoriously, abundantly, freely. I'm the one advocating for them all the time. The Holy Spirit comes back and says, uh, like I said, they don't know all of that. Look at the Jews, the very people you chose. They were the ones first called. And what happened? They walked away from you. And then God, our loving father, our loving parent says, stop, stop. My love is bigger than all of that. My love never ends. It conquers all, protects all. It protects my children from harm. My love continues no matter what they do, where they go. Nothing shall ever separate them from my love. Let's just keep telling them that. Maybe what we need is someone to remind them, to keep them focused, keep them close in my frame. Like, bring them back into my herd. Maybe we need a shepherd or a pastor. Yeah, there's an idea. So we hear this conversation, really, in the midst of Romans chapter 8, there is this conversation. So yes, we need reminding. We so often choose second best for ourselves. We do. We are made to think we're not worthy. Bad things happen and we don't know who to blame. We lose touch with the one person that always wants the best for us. So what are we really saying today? What is the point of this chapter eight in Romans? What is the point of Romans, the whole book? What are we supposed to take from this? Scripture says many times, don't be downcast, oh my soul. Don't be downcast, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. And this passage gives us reason to hope. We need hope right now. We need hope for a future here on earth. We need the hope for resurrection. We need the hope for a restored order in our cosmos, even. We need hope in the midst of adversity. Hope that we are on God's side. Not that God is on our side, but that we are on God's side. Like Wendell Phillips said, one on God's side is a majority. Our hope has to be based in God. Nothing else is sure. No other God, only Jesus, was raised from the dead. Not Buddha, not the Dalai Lama, not Vishnu, no other God was raised from the dead, and no other God can rescue. No other God wants nothing from you but your love, and wants nothing for you but to love you no matter what. The challenge to us today is can we accept God's love? What does that mean? Well, when we say we love someone, we forsake all others. When my husband and I, to be husband, and I had our first meeting with the minister who was going to marry us, he said, do you know what it means to be engaged? And I said, well, no, I've never been engaged, so. Well, he said, being engaged is like the cogs of a wheel. In order for one cog to be engaged, all the other cogs have to be disengaged. You can't be engaged to more than one at a time. And so that's why in a marriage ceremony, we often say forsaking all others. I take you forsaking all others. And so that is true in our lives. If we say we love God, have we forsaken all others? And do we, this is the hard part, 
do we see ourselves in the image of God? Do we see ourselves in the frame that God has created for us, where everyone fits in, no matter how different we are, everyone fits in that frame. Come back into the frame. You belong in that frame. Amen. We are made in God's image. We are made in God's image. We have some part of that frame in us. I hope that that image stays with you always. Thank you to Nancy and Keith for the wonderful music today. Thank you for those of us who are here in the sanctuary abiding by our COVID precautions. Thank you for those who are on Zoom today and on Facebook Live who have joined us to worship the God of all gods, the God that is above every other God in our lives and in this cosmos, in our world. So as we gather as God's people today, let us know that there is room in God's frame for each one of us. For all those for whom we have prayed, there's room in God's frame. Let us go out this week and take this joy, take the very words of Romans 8. Nothing shall separate you from the love of Christ Jesus, the love of God through Christ so may you be blessed today and every day in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May you know the blessing of God. May that blessing be more powerful than any piece of knowledge that you have gleaned from the news or from other people or a newspaper. May the blessing of God override and overcome everything else in your life. May healing be yours May blessing be yours, and may you share that blessing with others. In Jesus' name, amen.
our worship has ended.